have some information that might interest you. We'll be with you in just a minute. One of the witnesses took a lot of proof backing up his story. Hmm. So tell me, it's an obvious fraud. I'll throw the pit to get that forensic. Nothing but a cheap answer. The end of all, man, a deformed human. I can't believe he's still using that old story. Yeah, but look at what the other witness says. He claims that men lived to be over 900 years old. 900 years? Yeah. That's not possible. Uh, yes, it is. Is it possible for people to live over 900 years? The Bible says Adam lived to be 930. Methuselah was 969. The average age before the flood was 912. How on earth can you live to be 900 years old? What did they eat before the flood? And where did all the water from the flood go anyway? Where did it come from? When did dinosaurs live anyway? So what about the dinosaurs? Where did they live? Is it possible that men have seen dinosaurs all along? Why do we see dinosaurs put on ancient pottery? Why are they carved on cave walls? And why in the walls of the Grand Canyon do we find dinosaurs? Indians hunted them. I mean, would you want to stand up in front of God and everybody and defend the idea that we all came from a rock? How many of you have been taught that all the continents used to fit together in one big supercontinent called Pangaea? I bet they never told you they shrank Africa 40% to make them fit, did they? But there's no, no question the Earth is busted up into, in plates. And there's no question the plates are moving a little bit. The question is, when did this happen? I think it happened about 4,400 years ago at the flood in the days of Noah. And the poor kid in school today are taught over millions of years these plates have moved away from one supercontinent called Pangaea. They don't tell the kids they shrank Africa 40% to make those continents fit. They also don't tell them that Mexico and Central America are gone. They also don't tell them the obvious, that if you took the water out of the oceans, you would notice there is dirt underneath. These continents are not floating around like lily pads in a bathtub, folks, okay? They are connected. Water above the atmosphere? Psalm 148 says, Praise Him, ye waters that be above the heavens. See, the atmosphere that we're breathing today comes in six layers. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere, and ionosphere. There used to be a seventh layer. It was a layer of water above the atmosphere. Now, this is what is known as the canopy theory. I cannot prove this. I can just tell you what the Bible says. There was water above the atmosphere. And I'm going to believe the Bible until it's proven wrong. Okay? I can't tell you what it was or how it was held up there. Some people think it was ice, and it was held up by the magnetic field of the Earth. Suspended, what's called the Meissner effect. You know, a magnet will float on top of another magnet. I don't know. Somehow there was water up there.
the theory is that this canopy of water or ice would probably be 10 or 20 miles up, and it would double the air pressure here on Earth. This would increase air pressure and filter out UV light. So the canopy theory says probably we had greater air pressure because of this canopy over the top, and the whole earth was like a big greenhouse. Not only that, there was more water under the crust of the earth. If you read carefully, you'll see in Psalm 136, God said he stretched out the earth above the waters. That's an interesting verse. Psalm 24 says he founded it upon the seas. Did you know when God first made the earth, there was water inside the crust of the earth or under the crust? Maybe, I don't pick a number, say 10 miles down, there's subterranean water chambers. That's probably the water that came shooting to the surface when the fountains of the deep broke open. Obviously. Did you know an 80-foot apatosaurus has nostrils the same size as a horse? How on earth would an 80-foot animal get enough air through nostrils the same size as a horse? Well, sometimes in these amber pockets, there are air bubbles. The air bubbles have 50% more oxygen than we do today. Because under those conditions, what happens is not only does your hemoglobin take on oxygen in your bloodstream, your plasma will get oxygen saturated, which means you could run for hundreds of miles without getting tired. I think uh, before the flood came, things were just a lot different, okay? Probably double the air pressure, increased oxygen. Oh, it'd just be a lot different. It would sure make you heal up faster. How many of you remember baby Jessica that fell down in the well in Texas back in 87? She was down there for two and a half days. It was an amazing rescue. When they finally got her out of there, lots of her body had turned black from lack of circulation. One doctor said, we have to cut her leg off immediately because it's all black from no circulation. Another doctor said, hey, before we start cutting things off, let's try putting her in a hyperbaric oxygen.